Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Shelton, and today we're talking about Mohs micrographic surgery. Dr. Frederick Mohs was a genius, and in the 1930s, he actually devised this procedure to allow us to provide the greatest chance of cure while removing the least amount of normal skin for certain skin cancers. Over the years, more than 28 years of practicing Mohs surgery, unfortunately, I've seen patients come in much later than they should have to treat their cancer, mostly because they were concerned about their eventual appearance. When caught early, skin cancer is not only fully curable, but the cosmetic results can be outstanding. The most common skin cancers are basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, and many of these can be treated very well with Mohs micrographic surgery. Patients are normally referred when a biopsy has already been performed, showing that they have a skin cancer. The process of Mohs surgery involves injecting local anesthetic to make it comfortable. The unique aspect with Mohs surgery is that 100% of the surgical margin is identified, not a sampling. And this allows the surgeon to remove the skin cancer with the least amount of normal skin. In the laboratory, the sections are analyzed and the margin is identified. If there's any skin cancer on any place of the three-dimensional margin going around and on the sides and underneath, that is then identified. The skin cancer is removed and then analyzed in our laboratory right on the premises. Once it is identified, we're able to trace exactly where the skin cancer is and remove a small sliver of skin around or under that affected area. Because at this point, it's been a half hour, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half to analyze all that tissue. but all the rest of the skin that is clear of tumor is left alone. We proceed this way until all the skin cancer is removed. At that time, the skin cancer, having been removed, has less than a 1% chance of recurrence if it is a basal cell skin cancer. The defect after Mohs surgery is sometimes allowed to heal with antibacterial ointment or sewn together or sometimes a skin graft, or what's called a skin flap, is done. I'd like to demonstrate with this model how Mohs micrographic surgery is unique and provides the greatest tissue conservation, the most minimal wasting of good skin, sparing everything that we can, every millimeter can count, and providing the best chance of cure. With normal surgery, the doctor would have to analyze the specimen and take approximately beyond, let's pretend that this dark area is the cancer, from here to about here, about a quarter inch, to provide a reasonably good chance of cure. That specimen is sent with normal surgery to a laboratory, normally in a hospital or a private lab, that's going to analyze and send a report back, sometimes taking as much as two weeks. And if the doctor is sewing together the skin after removing the cancer, it is possible that that report a week or two later could say that there is skin cancer involving the margins of the specimen submitted. 
which means the doctor has to go back and operate again. In most surgery, we're doing everything the same day. So pretending again that this is the skin cancer, I use an instrument called a curette. It's kind of like an ice cream scooper. Most skin cancers, especially basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma, are often what we call friable, a little mushy. They're softer, even though they may feel rough, they're softer than the normal integrity of the skin. So we kind of just shell out easily what's mostly there. And let's pretend again that the black is microscopic evidence of skin cancer. We can't see it clinically. So instead of taking a margin from the area that shelled away creating this divot, instead of removing from here all the way out to here of normal skin all the way around, we're going to remove a very narrow one millimeter to two millimeter margin of what looks normal. That is removed surgically and instead of in normal laboratory slicing a loaf of bread and examining those representative sections, which is not 100% of the margin, in Mohs surgery, we will take the specimen and take this three-dimensional surface, the bottom, the sides, and the top perimeter, flattening it in one plane, making it a pie, like a pizza pie, snap freeze it to make it rigid and slice it six one thousandth of a millimeter thin sections that are mounted on a slide stained and analyzed all this can take half hour hour or more depending on the thickness and the amount of tissue so if we now under the microscope are analyzing all of the surface we might see as an example this side here is clear. However, there's still more involving this edge and the bottom. The specimen has been inked, so on the slides we know exactly where it is around the perimeter on relation to the face or wherever we're working on the body. So when we come back to our patient, we now identify which edge is still involved and the bottom it's still numb. We place more anesthetic in there to keep it numb through the day. We incise around the area and remove. Again, snap freeze it, section it, analyze it. If we find still that this side is involved, but now the deep margin is clear, we go back, re-identify that area, remove, analyze, and voila, we may find on this third stage or earlier or subsequent stages that we're now clear. So once it's removed with Mohs surgery, we have a defect that has the least chance of any residual skin cancer, the greatest chance of cure with the least amount of normal skin wasted. Mohs micrographic surgery allows our patients to come in, have the skin cancer removed and undergo reconstruction with local anesthetic the very same day in our practice. There are alternatives to Mohs micrographic surgery, including curatage and electrodesiccation. This is basically a scraping and cauterizing procedure. Sometimes there are topical therapies, medicated prescription creams that can take care of superficial skin cancers. There's laser treatment. There's radiation treatment. So the referring doctor who's performed the biopsy will normally advise patients as to which procedure would be best for them.